Apple just announced the new iPhone 14 and 14 Pro, along with some other goodies like the new AirPods Pro second generation, uh, the Apple Watch Series 8, SE, and the Apple Watch Ultra that's gonna retail for $800. Yikes, but you probably clicked this video to learn more about the new iPhone. So I'm here to share 10 facts about this new series. Let's get started. Number one, farewell mini. Hello Plus. That's right, there will not be an iPhone 14 mini this year, but instead Apple has replaced it with the iPhone 14 Plus. Now, as the name suggests, this is a bigger version of the regular 14, so the display spans 6.7 inches, it's got a bigger battery, and will last you for days. Seriously, Apple claims that this has the longest battery life ever, and I'm not surprised at that statement since uh, it brings the efficiency from the A15 Bionic chip and the 60 Hz OLED XDR display. I was honestly hoping for a 120 Hz promotion panel on the regular 14, but I guess Apple has strictly reserved that uh, for the Pro models. Now, if you're desperate to get an iPhone that's compact, uh, you can still pick up the iPhone 13 mini for $600. That's $100 cheaper than it was sold for last year, so I think it's still a pretty good deal in my opinion. Next up, Apple has finally upgraded the main wide angle sensor on the iPhone 14 Pro. We're talking a bump from 12 megapixels to 48 megapixels. So that supposedly results in significantly better detail, improved low light performance, and the ability to optically zoom in two times on the same sensor without losing clarity. They've also implemented pixel binning techniques that group adjacent pixels into one large pixel to give you more control in low light environments. Now, this isn't anything groundbreaking because Android phones have had this for years. I am, however, curious to see how it perform against something like the Pixel 7 Pro that's coming out very soon from Google. That should be a fun test. I'm also a bit disappointed by the fact that Apple hasn't upgraded anything on the 14 because on paper, it still has the exact same specs as the iPhone 13 with a few AI specific features and a minor f-stop increment for slightly better low light performance. The next big feature is Dynamic Island on the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, what does that even mean? Well, for starters, they've ditched the notch that we're all familiar with since the iPhone 10 with a new pill-shaped design that also has an upgraded true depth camera system. But knowing Apple, they wanted to take this to a whole new level by integrating notifications and background activity in an intuitive manner. So if you receive a phone call, it expands to notify you. It also shows when your AirPods are connected, setting your phone to mute, or even starting a charge. Even Face ID animations look sick. If you listen to music, it'll seamlessly morph into the background while you're in another app. And if you simply tap on it, you get quick access to playback controls. This is a system-wide interface uplift, and I'm super excited to try it out. It might take some time for third-party apps to support this new UI. Unfortunately, um, you don't get this feature on the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus. Next up, we have always on display on the Pro models. Finally, it was just a matter of time for Apple to implement this feature. Now, in order to keep it efficient, the LTPO display has been upgraded, so the screen refreshes as low as one hertz compared to 10 hertz on the 13 Pro. So that helps extend battery life along with the ability to dim the wallpaper while highlighting key information like time, notifications, and other stats. Apple has also boosted the peak brightness level for outdoor use uh, to 2000 nits, but keep in mind that with typical usage, you're looking at around 1000 nits, which is similar to the iPhone 13 Pro. Speaking of similarity, the display on the iPhone 14 is the exact replica of the 13. They haven't upgraded anything in that department. That being said, there are a few key safety features integrated into the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. First up, we have crash detection, which uses a new gyroscope sensor that can sense extreme accelerations or decelerations up to 250 Gs, and it also detects the quick pressure change caused by the airbags when they're deployed during a vehicle collision, while simultaneously detecting the extreme sound levels produced by the impact. And it automatically connects and sends alerts to emergency services. Now they build this algorithm based on a million hours of real world driving and crash data. And I think this is a very thoughtful safety feature that could help save lives. On top of that, they've given these phones the ability to connect via satellites when you're off the grid where there's poor cell coverage and require assistance. They've designed an interactive UI and an algorithm to quickly send messages to stations. And it also allows you to precisely share your location with a family member or friend if you're in the middle of nowhere. Safety is important. And I'm happy that Apple has given us these features on the 14 and the 14 Pro. Interestingly, Apple did mention that this feature is free for the first two years, but I'm not sure what will happen after. I mean, are they going to charge us a subscription fee or does it get disabled right away? I guess time will tell. Now, if you take a lot of photos, 
Apple has implemented a new processing algorithm called Photonic Engine. It's basically designed to give you better low light performance by improving their deep fusion technology that essentially combines multiple frames with different exposures to give you a dynamic image with vibrant colors, clear skies, and accurate skin tones. Now, I certainly have to test this out when I get my hands on the new iPhone. Um, there are also some video features added to this new series. For instance, action mode utilizes the entire sensor along with some crazy image stabilization techniques to give you a really smooth shot uh, that won't require a gimbal. I've actually gone on record and said that my iPhone 13 Pro has the best video quality on a smartphone and I use it a lot to create Instagram reels. So this feature unlocks a lot of potential for my creativity. By the way, cinematic mode, which was introduced on the 13 series, can now record up to 4K on the 14 and 14 Pro. However, the lack of 8K video recording on the Pro model is a bit of a letdown as well. And if you pick up the 120 gigabyte 14 Pro, ProRes video recording is still capped at 1080p. And I'm still thinking this has to do with a file size limitation thing. Now, this next fact is a big one. The iPhone 14 and 14 Pro will not support physical SIM cards. That is, if you live in North America. The international models will support them no problem. And Apple's reasoning behind this is that most of the carriers in this region have support for eSIM, which makes it easier to quickly transfer plans, store multiple plans or multiple SIM cards, and it's also a lot more secure. Now, keep in mind that if you buy a new iPhone directly from Apple, it stays unlocked, which makes transferring from carrier to carrier simple and intuitive. But if you buy it through a carrier, it's gonna strictly lock it during that carrier agreement, and I'm not sure what the unlocking process is after that. Um, now, I've never used an eSIM before, so this should be an interesting experience when I switch over, and uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes. Next up, we have a new chip called the A16 Bionic, which is only gonna live inside the Pro model. This uses a new four nanometer process that delivers more performance while also being power efficient. Now, the GPU cores should also be able to give you better gaming performance, and they've also managed to integrate a display engine that controls the LTPO display to refresh at one hertz, the always on feature, the dynamic island animations, and a lot more. Image processing has also gotten faster. That being said, the A15 Bionic chip that's inside the regular 14 is no slouch. It's the same chip that was on the 13 and 13 Pro, and I've been using the Pro um, as my daily, and the performance has been really smooth with tons of apps running in the background. This also offsets the chip shortage that we're facing at the moment, so it allows Apple to use the extra chips produced on the 14 and 14 Plus. Now, what are your thoughts regarding that? I get that it's sustainable, but at the same time, they're also trying to resell you the exact same chip that was announced last year. So I'm sure there are people on the other side of the fence as well. So let me know in the comments down below of what you think. Oh, and by the way, you can configure the Pro model with up to a terabyte of storage. Now, the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro come in a variety of colors. Let's start with the 14. It comes in blue, purple, midnight, starlight, and product red. They're still using the exact same aerospace grade aluminum construction as a 13, so you're not gonna notice a huge difference when holding it in your hand, other than the Plus model, which is a lot more bigger. The 14 Pro comes in deep purple, gold, silver, and space black, which is probably the spec that I would get. In terms of build quality and finish, expect the exact same setup as a 13 Pro series, but I am a little bit disappointed with the removal of the Alpine green finish, but who knows? Maybe six months later, Apple would launch a new colorway just to stay in the news cycle. All right, so the last thing that I wanna talk about is pricing. The iPhone 14 starts at $800 for the 120 gigabyte model, and the Plus model starts at $900. So that's $200 more than the 13 mini. Now, it would have been nice if Apple priced the regular 14 at $700 and the Plus model at $800, because in all honesty, it's not that different compared to the iPhone 13. It's got the same design, the same chip, same camera system with a few minor increments and the same battery. Personally, I would actually recommend people getting the iPhone 13 instead of the 14, because, you know, it's a lot cheaper than the 14, but you're basically getting the same phone. The Pro model, however, gets all the goodies like a new display with a better true depth camera system, better rear facing cameras, an always on display, and they're still charging $1,000 for the base model and $1,100 for the Pro Max. Now, that ain't cheap, folks, but it's one of the areas that hasn't been affected by inflation. So there you have it, 10 facts about the new iPhone 14. Let us know what you guys think about these new phones. Do you find any new feature particularly interesting? I'm excited to get my hands on the 14 Pro to test out Dynamic Island because that's my favorite feature about this launch. On that note, thanks so much for watching. I'm Eber with Hyrule Connects, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.